Hello everyone. So today's film is going to be a brand and product focus film. Today's film is also going to be a continuation of the Palest Shade series, which is a series for which that I have produced here on the platform www.youtube.com, where we trial out, test out and examine the credentials of a foundation or a concealer that is suited for the very fairest of skin tones. And today we are going to be looking at a product very recently released by NYX Professional Makeup and it is their Can't Stop, Won't Stop Full Coverage Foundation. I have two of the shades right here. This one is the shade Pale and this one is the shade Alabaster. I believe that these are the two very palest shades within the Can't Stop, Won't Stop range. I purchased two of the shades, Pale and Alabaster. Just by seeing Alabaster in its bottle, I think it will be slightly too dark for me. So I'm not going to be trying that one out today, but I can definitely say it is very suitable for some of the very fairest of skin tones. If you're a little darker than me, it probably will work quite well on you. So I'm going to be trying out the shade Pale today. What testifies a shade suitable for the Palest Shade series? It has to be lighter than MAC Cosmetics Studio Fix Foundation in the shade NW15. So anything that is lighter than that, we examine. That is where I begin the threshold and I also also use that as a comparison guide. NYX is certainly more geared towards being a more affordable brand, as this cost me a total of £15. Accompanying the shades Pale and Alabaster, there are also 43 other shades, so the total Can't Stop, Won't Stop range has in total 45 shades within the range, which I think is quite a many shades. I believe that they were aiming to capacitize all skin tones within this launch, and we shall certainly see today whether or not the shade Pale shall be applicable for the very fairest of skin tones. I purchased both of these foundation shades from www.debenhams.com. Now, neither of them came in any particular packaging. They are both made of glass and they have a plastic lid, which you just remove. And they have here quite a simple black pump. There is a slight bit of tape that has to be torn that connects the branding on the front as well as the branding on the cap together. And of course, that allows you to open the cap when you receive it. And it is a square shaped bottle. You receive 30 mils of product. And this is the back. It has the applicable information as well as if you are to peel this little thing here, it has the ingredients listed right here. And this is the little box for which that I received both foundations in from Debenhams. A simple Debenhams box with Debenhams branding and a little bit of bubble wrap. There's a visible difference between Alabaster and Pale. I would say that Alabaster is much darker. I would compare Alabaster to being a slightly darker version of Kat Von D's Light 42. I'd possibly consider it quite similar in undertone, maybe a little bit darker than the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation in the shade 100. And I would most certainly consider it to being very similar, maybe a little bit lighter than MAC Cosmetics Studio Fix Foundation in the shade NW10. Now I shall be going in with NYX Professional Makeup Can't Stop, Won't Stop Full Coverage Foundation in the shade Pale. It may be slightly unworthy of me to confess, but I am slightly amused that they named the palest shade within their range Pale. I mean, who would have thought of that? But I am definitely very excited to be trying out this foundation as it is visibly very pale. Before I go in and apply the foundation, you will be able to see that I have already applied eyebrows. I've also prepped and primed the skin using some of Embryoli's La Creme Concentrate, a classic favorite of mine. For eyebrows, I sketched in and stenciled in a shape using some of Kryolan's Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D40. And then I set all of that through using some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Espresso. Now, it's it's upon the bottle to shake well. Now I shall be taking three pumps of the product today as I do not know how it shall perform. It does proclaim to be a full coverage foundation so I may not need this amount but I just want to have enough just in case I need to go in and apply a little bit more. I began applying it using a Space NK foundation brush. Now I do not know how this foundation shall perform. It might go quite dry quite quickly, so I'm slightly dubious about applying it with a foundation brush, but I'm going to apply it and stipple it in with a buffing brush as quickly as I possibly can, as I do not want it to set too quickly, as I am unaware whether or not it shall set by itself or whether or not it shall require a powder to set it. Now, as you will be able to see, this foundation is definitely light enough for my skin. As you can see, it is blending marvelously into my neck. And I would describe the shade as being quite neutral. It's slightly more on the yellower side, which is quite convenient because I do have quite a bit of redness within my skin, certainly in the jaw area, which can be quite irritated by shaving. 
At this point, I am unable to determine whether or not the foundation shall oxidize, but we shall definitely have to wait and see. Time to cover my forehead. My forehead is rather large. It could be mistaken for a small country. In fact, just the other day, I discovered an embassy there. So that is the foundation on. Everything is covered. Now I'm going to go in and correct the texture by buffing and stippling all of the foundation into place using a Zova 102 silk finish brush. And I'm just stippling all of that into place. Now that is simply one coat of the foundation applied. I definitely will have to go in and apply another layer because I definitely do find that the technique of buffing and stippling can of course shear out a foundation. And I would definitely say that this foundation sets by itself. It is still slightly a bit tacky in some places, but I would definitely say that it is a slightly more drier formula. Although in saying that the temperature within my studio is very high, my studio is more superbly insulated than the average embryo. And I'm quite curious to see whether or not it shall oxidize. But so far, I actually like the way it's made my skin look. I shall definitely have to go in with some concealer into areas that require, certainly around the eyebrows and the under eyes and around the sides of the nose. But I definitely think this foundation can be sheared down, even though it is marketed as a full coverage foundation. I definitely think that it can be sheared down to something more natural and something more flattering for day-to-day -day use, as it just even set the skin and it has a matte finish. And I'm going to go back in and apply a second coat of that. So that is our second coat now applied. I would certainly say that its coverage is quite buildable and I would also state that it is probably best applied with either a sponge or a beauty blender or a buffing brush. It is probably going to be best applied in a stippling like motion as I have found this foundation to be quite dry. It definitely dries by itself and certainly in my dry area which is my forehead I wouldn't say that this would require any form of powder. Around the cheeks, it is slightly tacky, and on the neck, it is a little tacky. But so far, in terms of the shade, it is definitely a match to my natural skin tone. But as you can see, it is slightly messy looking around my eyebrows. Of course, I'm going to have to go in and cut around the eyebrows anyway. And underneath my eyes look slightly dry. I think most people don't really apply foundation right up underneath the eyes. I think most people go in with a stronger concealer or color corrector anyway but that's definitely something to bear in mind. The shade pale is definitely more on the yellow side of things. It's definitely got a yellower undertone. Now, I'm hoping that it would oxidize. I will be quite sad if it does oxidize, so we shall wait and see. But I definitely think that if you want a foundation that you can apply to a full coverage, I actually think this is a fantastic foundation for just putting on in the morning or if you have meetings or if you have work because it dries matte by itself so it would require setting with a lot of powder. You can build it up to quite a full coverage. It gives relatively good coverage with just one quite sheer coat. I quite like the way it's looking. That is why I would be quite disappointed if it oxidizes because I think this would be a fantastic foundation just for everyday use when I need to go out and I don't want to have a full face of makeup on and I don't tend to wear a full face of makeup on a day-to-day -day basis. I like to wear a product that just just cleans up my own appearance quite well. I also think it is the sort of foundation that applies best with just one coat. I have found it slightly coming off when I went in with a second coat. So I definitely think it'll be best applied when stippled on with either a brush or a beauty blender. And just after a couple of moments, I can definitely feel the rest of it setting into place. So it is definitely a matte finish. Now I can definitely notice slight color changes. I can see it actually darkening. So I'm slightly suspicious that it may oxidize, but I'm not going to wait all day for it to do so. And I don't think you can either. So I'm going to go in with the rest of the makeup and see how well it performs with other products. To color correct, neaten up the eyebrows and correct any other little areas or blemishes. I shall indeed be taking some of MAC Cosmetics full coverage foundation in the shade W10. And I'm applying that first of all to the under eye area on a Charles Fox 8146405 brush. Sometimes by going in with a yellow based foundation, then going in with a foundation or a concealer that's slightly more pink based, just to the areas that require a little bit of color correction can really brighten those areas. As I am applying this cream foundation on top of it, I'm finding it quite difficult to drag the product across it as it is very matte. So it is absorbing some of its moisture. And I'm just going in and stippling the edges of the concealer with an e.l.f. Flawless Concealer Brush, remembering to be particularly careful around the eyebrow area. Whilst blending that in, I can visibly see that it has began to oxidize, certainly in the neck area, not so much on the face yet. If I turn slightly to the side, you can actually see in the neck area that it is darkening. It has become darker than my own natural skin tone. Now I am slightly more on the drier side of things, and I definitely would say that this foundation 
foundation actually reminds me of the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Foundation, which I found to be quite matte in the past. Now on me, it doesn't need powder at all. I am going to go in and set my concealer in just a moment. But if you are somebody with more slightly oily skin, I think this foundation would be fantastic for you. If you are somebody with a more drier skin, I would definitely recommend that you use a moisturizer that is quite humectant and is thoroughly moisturizing. Embarking on with the rest of the look, where I went in and applied concealer underneath the eyes, around the eyebrows, and to areas that required a little bit more coverage, I'm going to be going in with a classic favorite of mine, Cryolan's Loose Translucent Powder in the shade TL3. And to the underneath of the eyes, I'm applying it with a Zova 228 brush. Just a light amount, just to make sure that everything's set into place. Then I'm setting the rest of it with an Autograph Blusher brush. Now I shall definitely say on me, I personally would not powder this NYX Can't Stop, Wouldn't Stop foundation. It isn't really required as my skin is more on the drier side of things. However, if you are somebody with a slightly more oily epidermis, I trust you shall use powders accordingly. And I've just gone back in and corrected the eyebrow shape, feathering the eyebrows. Before I go in and apply any additional makeup, I'm going to go in with some of Bioderma's makeup removing solution, just to remove any of the foundation and powder that ended up on the lips. And just to put a little bit of moisture back into the lips, I'm going to be taking some of Elizabeth Arden 8 hour cream and I shall be applying a little bit of that to the lips. It shall also prep the lips for whatever lip product I intend to go in with next. To contour, I'm going to be going in with a classic favourite of mine, which is Inglot's Powder Eyeshadow in the shade 349. And I am stippling it on, first of all, using a Charles Fox 814640 4-3 brush. And I'm stippling it on because I didn't want to buff it on or brush it on in fear I may disturb the formation of the foundation for which that we have applied today. Although I do believe that this foundation might be okay to swirl product on because it is a matte finish and it sort of clings to the skin right away. I think that you can get away with applying product on top of it in a slightly more vigorous motion. And on closer inspection, I am gazing at my cheek via my magnified mirror and it doesn't look as if though I have disturbed the foundation that much by brushing it over. With the contour shade now applied, I'm now going to be going in with a classic favourite of mine, which is MAC Cosmetics Powder Blusher in the shade Blush Baby. And I'm applying it with a Graduate Dilla and Rowney Oval Wash Brush. I don't want to apply too much of it, I'm just sort of dusting it on. And I'm just taking it down slightly into the contour and up onto the highest point of the cheekbone, just so that everything is seamless. For highlighter, I'm going to be going in with another NYX product. And this is the NYX Professional Makeup Dual Chromatic Illuminating Powder in the shade Twilight Tint. And I had actually purchased this product not all that long ago. It's absolutely gorgeous on the cheeks. I also have Lavender Steel, which is another absolutely beautiful color. This one is more pinky purple dual chrome, whereas the Twilight Tint is this absolutely beautiful frosty blue colour. And I'm going to be applying it on an Inglot 4SS brush. And I'm just taking a little bit of it into the brow. Slight amount of it on the forehead, a little bit of it at the bridge of the nose, tiny bit of it in between the eyebrows, and a tiny bit of it on the chin. NYX also do these absolutely beautiful cream highlighters. This one is a more purpley duochrome shade, and this one is a slightly more blue duochrome shade. I like to wear these as a cheek highlighter when I'm wearing hardly any makeup, as they add the most ethereal glow to the skin. I also like to apply a little bit of it to the decolletage. I'm going to apply a tiny bit of this to the the neck today just so that you can see how lovely it is. And I always like to apply quite a lot to that hollow there and quite a lot on the collarbones. I'm just going to blend that with my hands. And as you can see, it just gives the skin the most beautiful sheen. Now I just went into a different room which has different lighting to that of this one. And this foundation is definitely holding up to being a pale formulation because we have makeup applied in other areas and certainly a full face of foundation and concealer, it can make the eyes look quite bold. So I'm going to go in and apply some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Hawks. And I'm applying it to the eye on a MAC 239 brush. And I'm just going to apply this colour singularly. And I'm just going to apply this colour all the way up to the socket and slightly higher and elongate it out slightly and blend it thoroughly. So I only want to wear one colour with this look. And I have begun blending and swooping the colour out just ever so slightly with a MAC 217. And now I'm going in with a Kidstar's N31 tapered blender brush and just softening all those edges just to ensure 
seamlessness. And then I'm going in with a clean MAC 217 and just buffing over everything. Then I'm going to apply a little bit of that Hox color on a Kidstar's N33 micro pencil brush. I don't want to create that much definition on the underneath of the eye. I want to kind of keep it all on the top of the eye. But this just connects the two together. So I'm keeping most of the color more towards the outer corner of the eye. To add a slight twinkle of light and a highlight to the inner corner, I shall be going in with some of Becca's Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed in the shade Pearl. And I'm just applying a little bit of that to the inner corners of the eyes using a Kidstar's N30 Small Tapered Blender brush. It just brightens that area up ever so slightly. With the eyeshadow now applied, I'm now going to go in and curl my eyelashes using some of Inglot's eyelash curlers. For mascara, I'm going to be using a classic favourite of mine, the Balm's What's Your Type. With the mascara applied, I then went in and applied some corner eyelashes just to add a little bit more depth to the eye. Then I'm going to go back in and just take a little bit of our Hawks colour just a little bit further along and then blend it just ever so slightly. To finalise, I'm now going to go in and apply some of Charlotte Tilbury's Lip Cheat in the shade Pillow Talk. I'm not going to apply too much of this because I'm not really feeling like wearing a lot of lipstick today, but I'm just going to simply correct the asymmetry within the lips. I applied the Pillow Talk lip liner and I filled in the lips just ever so slightly. With the Pillow Talk lip liner now applied to the lips, I'm now going to go back in with some of our Elizabeth Arden 8 hour cream and just apply a little bit of this to the lips and it just makes the lips feel a little bit less like concrete. I have never really liked concrete, as a matter of fact. I've always considered it to be slightly like discount stone. So that more or less summarizes my brand and product focus film, examining NYX's Can't Stop, Won't Stop full coverage foundation. Before I speak about the foundation, I can definitely confirm both of these shades pale and alabaster to be suitable for the very fairest of skin tones. Now with this foundation, as you will be able to see, it has oxidized. Because it has such a strong yellow base to it, I definitely find with foundations that are more yellow undertoned when applied to the very fairest of skin tones, when they oxidize, they don't look so obvious or stark on the skin in comparison to a foundation that might be the same shade, but it is of a pinker undertone. I tend to find that the more pinky undertone foundations when they oxidize, they look incredibly dark on the skin. And on examination, I would definitely say that it is a matte foundation. I don't think I can emphasize that any more than I have. Despite it being a very matte foundation, it hasn't actually accentuated my own finer lines that much. I would definitely say as well with this foundation, I think it is probably best applied in a thin layer, even though it is marketed as a full coverage foundation. I think it looks most flattering used as a light to medium foundation. I do tend to find with foundations that set by themselves, particularly the ones that are a medium to full coverage, do tend to sort of separate themselves on my own skin. Personally, that's the problem that I have personally with those styles of foundations. I definitely think it's a fantastic foundation for its price. And there are 45 shades in the range. So I think that almost everyone will be able to find a shade within the range. I definitely think the foundation looks best when stippled on because it actually began to dry and set and go matte as soon as I put it onto the skin. So I would definitely recommend stippling it into place. And again, even though the shade pale has oxidized on me, I definitely think I could get away with it by adding a little bit of white into the mix or by applying a slight amount of white powder over the top of it just to lighten the shade up ever so slightly. I definitely think that there are ways to work with a product, and I definitely think that there are different ways for a product to work. And of course, foundation is such a subjective thing. It can work for one person, it cannot work for another. So that's always something to bear in mind. And of course, there are shades for the very fairest of skin tones, as well as the very darkest of skin tones. So there is definitely something there for everyone to try. I'd very much like to see this as the opportunity to congratulate NYX and all of the companies for well, their very recently launched Can't Stop, Won't Stop full coverage foundation. I think it is an absolutely fantastic foundation, certainly for its price point, and I wish them the best of luck with the brand, product development, and future launches. So that more or less summarizes my brand and product focused film. I have had a lot of fun creating this film for you here today. I hope that you have found the tips, the techniques, and the recommendations for which that I have shared within this film to be either interesting, useful, helpful, or beneficial. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and of course, take care. Bye.